Hey everybody, Kent here. I just got in my new PWR Roam scooter. And yeah, it looks really good so far. I just got it assembled. Assembly was super easy. Honestly, couldn't, couldn't have been much easier. It was just a few things you had to really put together. The front wheel, which just slides right in and tightens up. I had to attach this rack here, which was just these four bolts. Um, and then this light as well, which is just the one bolt, uh, which attaches with the fender as well. So the fender and the light go in the same mount. Um, only issues I did have were the fender. You can see there, there was kind of a mark where the fender was actually mounted a little bit crooked. I just had to loosen those two bolts um, to get everything to work properly. So really no harm, no foul there. But that was the only snag I ran into. Probably took me 10 or 15 minutes to get everything assembled and ready to ride. So um, yeah, no complaints there. But this thing, you know, first impressions, just looking at it, it looks like a Toyota Tacoma or a Forerunner or something for sure. So I really like that. That's a cool, it's a cool paint scheme and just, you know, the kind of tan on black looks military-esque or something like that. So um, I'm into that. The brakes feel really good. They feel like really high-end mountain bike brakes. So I'm excited to see how those perform. Um, the thing stands really tall. I'm 6'2", and this thing just seems like, like this is up to basically my belly button, the or maybe even a little higher, the handlebars are a little over my belly button. Um, so you can see how just tall the thing sits off the ground too. You have about eight inches or so of ground clearance, which I think will come in handy once you get take this thing into the woods. Um, not too many scooters are capable of going off road. This one uh, supposedly is, so it'll be cool to see how that does and if it scrapes over logs and rocks and things as you get going. Um, but other than that, it's got basic, you know, e-bike controls and how you turn it on and turn it off. You press the power button to turn it on. You press the power button again if you want the lights to turn on. And you can adjust your power ranges here up and down as well. Um, this It didn't come with this. I added this little cup holder here just because I take this thing, in addition to taking it in the woods and hunting and fishing and all of that, I take it to the coffee shop. I take it to the farmer's market. I take it kind of a little bit everywhere, at least that's the plan to. Um, that's what I do with my current e-bike. So I assume I'm gonna use this in the same in the same way. Um, but yeah, that's the first little uh, walk around to the bike. We're gonna go gear up and uh, take it for a spin, see how it goes. All right, guys, we're gonna take this thing for a spin. Power it on, and it is on a full charge. I gave it a full charge last night after I got it assembled. Let's just start it on eco mode, power one, and see how it goes. Oh. Hmm, that's weird. I don't know if you guys can hear that or sense it, but kind of jolting or like jerking a lot like going rrr, 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 with the power it's not really feeding it smooth that's weird I don't know if I just have let me try going up to power two power two does it too it just does it I really plan on being in power one or two very often but that is kind of strange. Let me try. If I put it in two and maybe give it a little load, like go through the grass or something, does it still do that? Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't do that once you kind of put a load on the motor, but so that's like it kind of. That's like it's speed limiter. That dirt, 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 dirt. It's almost like a speed limiter on a car. All right, we're gonna cruise around in three, just so, because I find that a little bit annoying, that jolting. Again, I didn't buy this thing to, it looks like on the first power mode, your top speed is like eight miles an hour. Second, it goes up to 12. Three, it goes up to like 16. Four, it looks like 18, 19 or so. And then on the highest setting, it supposedly goes 25. Um, I'll probably end up using it in the highest setting more than anything, just because, I don't know, that tend, tends to be what I do. I don't always necessarily go 
full throttle everywhere, but um, yeah. So, so far, first impressions is I thought this thing was going to be kind of cumbersome, like, you know, it, it's really big when you're standing next to it, but it actually feels like any other scooter I've ridden. Like, I got on this thing and I feel immediately comfortable. It feels feels proportional to any scooter. Like, I, it really looked like these handlebars were going to be really up high, like up by my chest. But now that I'm standing on the platform, it feels proportional. Like, I thought my wife was going to have a hard time riding this thing just because it's so big. But now that I'm standing on it, I think anybody, an average sized person, or even on the smaller side, will have no trouble with this. Once I'm on this, me at 6'2", I'm even feeling like the handlebars could be a smidge taller for me if I really wanted them to be, um, which I'm sure I could find, you know, a higher rise bend bar if I ever felt like that would be an improvement. But no, it feels good. It's a happy medium. I can tell that PWR, when they created the height of this handlebar, you know, made it made it in between for, for a good reason. It seems like it's where it probably ought to be. Yeah, I, I run this sidewalk all the time on my e-bike, and it's kind of fun to weave in and out, you know, weave in and out of these little turns and around the poles and walls. Um, but yeah, this thing's cruising. I'm doing 24 right now. Brakes are solid. Probably have a little braking in to do, but they feel really good. Suspension's nice too, going over those bumps. It really, forks feel good. I don't know, pretty sure they're air forks. And I hadn't added any air to them, but they do feel like there are, there is a good amount of air in them already. But yeah, they're, they're soaking up the, the bumps pretty good. And I've hit a few like G outs or like, you know, uh, some of these gutters and stuff. And it doesn't seem to just blow through the stroke. Seems like it holds up good. So if I ever had a bigger bump or like a bigger hit that I needed to go over or a bigger bump that I need to roll over, it seems like the suspension will handle it pretty good. Um, and just so you guys know, I'm 6'2", 230 some odd pounds. So I'm not a small person uh, at all. And so far this thing's I mean, it's cruising. I'm, I am in the top the top setting, so this is, you know, the fastest setting. But pretty impressed. Like it's almost going too fast here. Like if you're, if I was just riding it down the sidewalk casually, I might turn it down to setting four. Seems a little bit more appropriate, but that's not me. So we're gonna put it back on five. <laughs> All right, I know there's a little like drop off right here that I hit on the mountain bike. Oh. Uh, yeah, I actually did really well there. I was kind of bracing for impact, but I did a good job. Here, up. Catch a little air. <laughs> All right, we'll turn here. There's a little, this is, so this entire hill is a slight, it's probably hard to tell on the GoPro, but th this is a slight uphill. So you'll probably hear the motor strain a little bit. That said, I mean, Hasn't struggled at all yet, so. I'm gonna make a right-hander here. A friend of mine lives in this neighborhood. See if he wants to come out and play with my new toy. Yeah, this thing's I can already tell you, this thing's gonna be a ton of fun. I mean, <laughs> just cru zipping around like this. Let's see if Jeff is there. Nope, Jeff seems to be out today. Sorry, Jeff. So the front brakes work really well. They make a little bit of a squeaking noise. So there might be a little residue or something on the brakes that I got on there from when I put the wheel on. I know that that can cause those brakes to squeak but 
just because they're making those noise doesn't mean they're not working. They're, they work extremely well. I feel like I could probably throw myself over the handlebars if I grabbed that front brake hard enough. They're definitely really good brakes. I don't even know what brand they are. I think they might be Tektro. Uh, but I mean, here, I'll stop at this stop sign. I'm going wide open, basically as fast as the, the bike will go. And yeah, I mean, this thing stops in a dime. So um, brakes are good impressed with those and i think honestly on on vehicles like this you know these electric vehicles that are coming out or electric bikes and toys they're going faster and faster and honestly that just in trend, you know inherently makes them more dangerous when you're weaving in and out of traffic or things of that nature and so uh it's good to have good brakes to keep you safe I've definitely ridden some e-bikes that don't have good brakes and yet they'll still do 20 some odd close to 30 miles an hour and that gets a little hairy pretty quick oh, I just caught air there this thing is like I mean surprisingly it's <laughs> I mean I'm catching inches of air but uh, I think it's coming off the ground it's kind of fun all right we're gonna cross the street here when we can I guess we'll do it down here but there's a little park up here I figure we'll go cruise around the park, see what we can see. We'll go around these folks, take it through the grass a little bit. Now the grass doesn't seem to phase it. That's good. Um, if you're on either pavement or low cut grass or kind of hard packed ground, I don't see the battery draining less than, you know, 15 miles or so of use without it before it drains all the way down. That said, we'll test it out today. I don't know if I'll test a, make a full range test video today, but we'll at least probably go seven, eight miles and we'll see how much battery life we have left. <coughs> All right, so we have the soccer field here. I just want to see how fast it'll get up to from a dead stop when we're in grass. And this grass is, I wouldn't call it thick. I wouldn't call it thin. It's somewhere in between. It's pretty, you know, once you step on it, it's kind of soft and you sink down a little bit. But we're going to back up to this line and we're just going to go wide open all the way to the other the line on the other side of the field and see what top speed we get up to. All right, up to 10 miles an hour, 15, or close to 15, 16, and it looks like we got up to 17 and a half over the course of the soccer field. Let's see if what top speed we can get this thing to, like grass. Oh, it gets up and goes. Yeah, once you get these wheels turning, the thing really cruises over the grass. Looks like it's doing about 18, 19 miles an hour through this grass. We're gonna jump this little curb, see if we can catch some air. Whoa! <laughs> Oh, that was fun. We're gonna do it the other way. <laughs> oh man. I would go take it uh, onto the skate park over there, but I know you're definitely not supposed to have any electric vehicles on that. And there's some there's some guys over there doing some maintenance on it, it looks like, so we'll leave them alone. 
maybe one day I'll come back and take this thing, take this thing on the skate park and see how it does. All right, we're gonna jump the curb or the yeah. speed bump. Oh, rolled over that, no problem. Um, so far, I'll say this, super fun to just cruise around your neighborhood, first of all. It's very, I mean, you can see I'm riding with one hand right now, my other hand on the throttle doing all the controlling and I do not feel sketchy or out of control by even the slightest measure. I mean, it's, this thing's very stable. I feel like it's very just intuitive to ride. I hopped on and just kind of felt at home. Uh, it's got lots of storage on it, which is kind of the reason I bought it. I like the idea of taking this thing camping with my kid or, you know, taking it to the farmer's market, loading up with food or, you know, things of that nature and being able to haul it back home. That's kind of what we do with my e-bike now. Um, and I see this, you know, this thing doing a lot of the same things that I do with my e-bike. Uh, this is just a lot, in my opinion, this is a little bit more fun, <laughs> like just hopping on and cruising around. The bike isn't as comfortable for, at least for me to sit on kind of hunched over. Uh, this is better for my back, feels better on my knees. Um, so I, depending on who you are and what kind of ailments you have, one might be more comfortable than the other. Uh, but for somebody like me, who has hip, back, and knee problems. Uh, I like this. It, not to say I don't like the bike. I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm just a guy that likes to buy toys. <laughs> um, so I like to experience different things. But, I mean, my wife could be riding the bike, I can be riding this, or vice versa. Um, I'm gonna figure out a way to haul my kid around. I have a one and a half year old, an 18 month old. Uh, I want to find a way for him either to like sit on the front rack or maybe on the back rack. I don't know yet. And I'm not even necessarily recommending that you do it yet until I can find a safe enough solution. But I want to find a way to be able to haul my kid around on this thing. So what we do with the bikes, bikes I'm going to jump. Ooh, oh yeah, definitely caught some air that time. <laughs> this thing's fun. Uh, but anyway, what I was getting at is I plan on using this thing kind of for anything and everything. We we go to, well, I race dirt bikes, race motocross, and one of the things that is very common to have at those races is a pit bike because, you know, sometimes the pits are huge, like miles long from one end to the other. So walking that whole way gets really old really fast. Um, so having a pit bike to be able to go from one end of the property to the other really comes in handy. Yeah, I haven't really been paying cl super close attention to how fast I'm going, but it seems like I've been cruising around 23, 24 miles an hour. Um, don't mind me just blowing through some stop signs. There's no traffic on any of these roads when school's in session, so uh, except for this main road up here, but all these back roads stay pretty pretty unpopulated during the day um, but yeah kind of have a bunch of different plans we want to do this thing mainly it's just my family's constantly on the go and not necessarily on the go in a car we're on the go by bikes or by skateboards or by scooters or whatever like we we like our different modes of transportation we we get enjoyment out of that and uh, you know, I think this will just add a fun factor that the e-bikes don't quite have. Alright, so this back rack says do not sit. And I would recommend following that. But, just to test it out for you guys, I'm going to sit down. Okay. Well, I see why they tell you not to sit as soon as I did this all my weights in the back and it keeps it makes the front end really light and probably not safe all right guys that is my initial review on the pwr rome uh so far i, I think it's going to be a ton of fun no doubt my wife and kid i think are going to really love it um it's going to be a great pit bike i think uh, as long as everything holds up 
first impressions are really good. I did it off camera because um, my battery died and I forgot to record it, but I did load this thing up into the bed of my truck with relative ease. It wasn't that hard. I know that's a common thing. Um, at least I know I thought when I first saw this, like, man, it's gonna be a pain to transport. Um, but actually I can lift up the front and lift up the back and lift the whole thing up even. I don't know if you guys can see this, but uh, I can lift it up pretty easily. Um, I am a bigger guy, but if, I mean, worst case scenario, you get some help and uh, have, have help, you know, have somebody help you lift it up in the bed of your truck. Uh, if you don't have a truck, I, it seems to be roughly the same length as a, as a bike. So I think you could probably use your bike carrier and just get creative with strapping it down. But um, yeah, awesome first impression. First little ride on it. It was fun. Uh, battery life looks like it's going to actually last around 20 miles um, with riding it pretty aggressively. Um, on pavement, that being said, you know, uh, once you take it into the grass and dirt, I'm sure that will kill the range a little bit. But it looks like it will do at least 20 miles um, on pavement or close to that. And uh, has plenty of power, good torque, fits me well. So far, we're the only thing that the only issue or the only thing that bu bugs me a little bit is that speed limiter at the bottom where it kind of is a little jerky. Um, as I was riding it around a little bit here a second ago, it seemed like it was doing it less and less to the point where I almost barely could tell it's happening. So I don't know if that's just because it was new or if it's something that I need to like reset it or something. Um, that being said, it did only did it in setting speed setting one and two, which I pretty much don't plan on ever using. Uh, that being said, I don't know if it's like a problem or if that's just how they limit the speed in those lower settings. Don't know. I'll give PWR a call and see what they say. But um, yeah, first impressions are great. Things are going to be a lot of fun once I get to take it off road and see what can do out there. Go up some hills, down some hills, that kind of thing. But just wanted to give you guys a little rundown on this thing and uh, yeah, excited to see what I can do with it next.